This is Democracy Watch. So, Mark, we've got some dangerous news just ahead of Virginia's upcoming election. A Virginia vote purge just removed over 3,000 voters from the rolls. Uh, that state is joined by Ohio, where their purge removed 26,000 voters from the rolls. How much of this is cause for alarm versus how much of this is routine maintenance? So we know that the Virginia one was not routine maintenance because even Glenn Youngkin's folks have acknowledged it was it was an illegal purge. So it was an illegal purge in Virginia. I, I worry about it in Ohio. I worry about it in Virginia uh, because when you remove people from the rolls, you are basically taking away their ability to vote. And when you have particularly close midterm elections or off year elections like we're having in Virginia, you know, these elections in these state legislative districts can come down to a dozen votes here, a dozen votes there. And if people who are not in Virginia don't know, both chambers of the Virginia legislature are within a seat or so of going Democrats versus Republicans. And so, you know, Glenn Youngkin's folks can tell me that this was uh, an error, that they didn't mean it. Count me skeptical. Is there any evidence of foul play here? I mean, a voter purge took place right. that was illegal, that everyone now acknowledges was illegal. That first Glenn Youngkin's uh, elections uh, uh, people said was smaller. Then it turns out it was bigger than they originally said. So uh, I think there was foul play. I think that people have to get to the bottom of this. Unfortunately, that's not going to be done entirely before the election, but we can't give up on this. And as far as Ohio, here's what you need to know. If you read the headlines about it, they said that uh, that that uh, the Republicans, uh, that LaRose, the secretary of state, who, you know, is pulling all kinds of shenanigans to try to keep that choice ballot initiative from passing. Right. They said that he did it, quote, quietly. Well, let me ask you this. If 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 you're LaRose and normally you're trumpeting to the to the moon that you're that you're doing uh, integrity, you know, related cleanup of voter rolls. Why do you do that one quietly right before the pro-choice ballot initiative? Perfectly put. Um, to your point, you mentioned that the number in Virginia was supposed to be about 270, and that number ballooned up to 3,400. Is there any way to restore these voters who were mistakenly uh, removed from the rolls? Like you mentioned that they may not be restored in time for 2024. So I guess what happens next here? So look, once the once the Yunkin folks got caught, um, they they did start taking steps to restore some of them, and there have been a bunch restored, but not all of them. And you know. This is the this is the 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 game that Republicans are playing. First, they do it. They hope they don't get caught. Then when they do get caught, they they sort of walk it back. They're like, oh, it's an error and we'll fix some of it. But they don't fix all of it. And in the meantime, if you're a voter in Virginia, what's the message you're receiving? The message you're receiving is that you may have been removed from the voter rolls. You don't get the message that you may have been added back in. What you know is you may not be eligible to vote. And in what will already be a low turnout election, right, because it's in the middle of November of, of 2023, that can make the difference, particularly because these are state legislative districts. And the turnout in state legislative districts are already small, and these are very, very hotly contested races. So it's a tragedy for democracy. It's a cynical game that Republicans play around this country, not just in this two states we're mentioning, but this is part of their playbook. And, you know, when you add the add into that the election vigilantism, which is pri basically just privatizing purges, it's a lot to be worried about. And by the way, for anybody watching, to stay on top of all of this news, please make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. It's the free news outlet Mark founded on everything voting and elections. The link is right here on the screen. Uh, so, Mark, is there any way to know the partisan breakdown of these purged voters? Um, in Virginia, it's very, very hard because uh, you don't register by party. So you can impute some information about party based on location, based on race, which uh, they do have, but it's very hard to know. But here's here's what I'll say. I, I will be very I, I think if I think if the people who were purged were not lean Democrat and did not skew more heavily minority than uh, than white, Glenn Youngkin would have told us that fact. So the fact that he hasn't said that, that tells you probably what you need to know. Can you speak on the historical use of voter purges as a voter suppression tool? Like this isn't a new tactic that Republicans are suddenly using here. No, voter purges is the oldest way that Republicans have used to disenfranchise voters. They used it to target black voters. Then they used it to target student voters. And now they just use it to target whatever population they don't want involved. And we have seen these purges 
for decades. And Congress tried to regulate these purges by putting limits on when uh, states can conduct uh, uh, removal of uh, voter removal uh, and when they and what notice has to be given and what opportunities have to be. But the fact that we're in 2023 talking about this yet again on the eve of yet another election just shows that when it comes to elections, Republicans want to make it harder to vote and easier to cheat. And I say that over and over again, because the voter purge part is making it harder to vote. But the the doing it and breaking the law is just cheating. It's just cheating. And so this is a longstanding tactic that Republicans use. And it is one that I worry about for, for 2023. And I worry a lot about for 2024. Well, we we do have Eric to maintain the integrity of the voter rolls. And luckily, Republicans <laughs> definitely aren't pulling out of that system every chance they get. Yeah, right. So Eric was a, for those of you who don't know, is a system, it, was an inter, it is an interstate compact, it is an agreement between states to share information about voters. So that if Mark Elias lives in New York and he moves to, to California, New York tells California, hey, Mark Elias moved there. California says, yep, we got him. And then I get, then you get removed from New York. It was started precisely to allow greater clean, greater election integrity. It was begun not as a project to the left, but as a project to make sure that people were removed when they should be removed. Well, why are Republicans leaving that kind of system? They're leaving that kind of system because it also, uh, because because by, by it having clean rolls, it removes the excuse that Republicans want to conduct illegal purges. And that's what they're up to. Exactly. Um, on the topic of voter suppression tactics, the New York Attorney General's office has now sent a cease and desist letter to a right wing group that was accused of confronting voters at their homes while impersonating state election officials and falsely accusing people of committing voter fraud. Um, we saw a similar situation play out in Virginia. Can you speak on the surge of vigilante groups looking to intimidate voters? Yeah, look, I wrote about this, uh, the crisis of election and vigilantism for Democracy Docket. There's an article on the website, or opinion piece on the website you can read. And Democracy Docket covers election vigilantism because I believe it is actually the greatest threat to free and fair elections in 2024. Let me say that again. If you watching this video think I'm very worried about the 2024 elections and what shenanigans Republicans will pull, and you are worried about disinformation and voter suppression and certification, I'm here to tell you the biggest thing I worry about is election vigilantism. Right-wing groups that are Set, that are set up and that operate semi-autonomously, and they stake out people at drop boxes wearing guns and body armor. They go door to door and spread misinformation. They challenge not dozens, not hundreds, not thousands, but tens of thousands of voters in one fell swoop to try to remove them from the voter rolls. And we are seeing a surge of this. Donald Trump and Trumpism stands for this. And unfortunately, the entire Republican Party from Mike Johnson, the new vote suppressor in chief in the House of Representatives on down, this is what they stand for. And what's being done to rectify this issue? Like, I'm, I'm sure that Democratic secretaries of state are taking this issue seriously. But what about red states where they might actually benefit from something like this? So this is why it's the greatest fear that I have, is that, first of all, it's harder to take action against these groups because you it's sometimes hard to even know who's behind them. But what are, what what's happening? Number one, my team is in court as we speak in Georgia, suing True the Vote uh, to try to uh, uh, to try to stop them from engaging in the kind of uh, 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 uh private voter challenges, mass voter challenges, we saw them engage in uh, in 2020. My team is in court in a number of places trying to deal against, uh, bring lawsuits against election vigilantism. Democratic secretaries of states are, Democratic attorneys general are. It's gonna take all of us to do that, but where Democrats control state legislatures, they need to pass new laws urgently to, to make it harder for these vigilantes to act and for the criminal penalties for election vigilantism to go up. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Obviously, we're grateful for the work that you and your team are doing in court, not just on that issue, but on protecting voting rights and democracy more broadly across the country. So for anybody watching right now, if you want to support Mark and his team, please make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. Again, it's that free news outlet he founded to focus on everything voting and elections. The link is right here on the screen. It's also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch. Democracy Watch.